I'm kind of known as the iPad guy on YouTube. I work completely from the iPad, including recently going back to editing all of my videos on the iPad now that Final Cut for the iPad is here. My go-to is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This is my main iPad. This is the one that I work from but I also have an iPad mini. And this right here is my specialty device. I use this for really specific tasks. This video is sponsored by Paperlike and their new cleaning kit. The iPad mini is the device I use when I'm, you know, sitting on the couch or in the chair in my office here or in the chair in my bedroom. You know, it could be reading articles in the morning or building shortcuts in the evening. This is kind of my go-to lounging device. When I'm home, I don't use my iPhone much. My iPad mini is actually my go-to device when I'm not doing work-specific tasks. So if I need to send off a message to somebody or read an email or just, you know, look up something to for dinner or something, I don't know, the iPad mini is the device I grab. It's also the only iPad I use in portrait mode. As you may have seen on the channel, I get a lot of different iPads to review and stuff like that. And you'll primarily always see me using them in landscape, especially when it comes to multitasking, if you're using stage manager or split view, uh, just landscape works best for those. But the iPad mini is the iPad I use strictly in portrait mode. So why use the iPad mini as a secondary device? It's not the cheapest iPad, but it's the form factor, which probably doesn't surprise anyone. The size makes it easy to use one-handed, whether you're just sitting on the couch and reading an article, or if you're even texting somebody, you can pinch the keyboard and make it the small iPhone keyboard size, and you can type one-handed really easily. The iPad mini I'm using is the Starlight model in 256 gigs. The 64 gig one just isn't enough for me, and I got Starlight because I just wanted to try something new. Normally I go with the Space Gray iPads. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's, it's just kind of like, eh, it is what it is. Like I mentioned, I use this iPad mini a lot for reading. I do a lot of reading via RSS. I use the service feed bin to gather up all the RSS links and stuff like that, uh, including newsletters as well, because feed bin allows you to have newsletters sent to it. And then I use the app reader on the iPad mini to kind of go through and read them. I like the gestures. Uh, I like the fact that it has the bionic reading feature. It's just, it's a good app. It's well designed. And then if I come across something that I really want to save for later, maybe I just want to really go in depth with it, or I don't have time to read it. It's like a long article or something like that. I will save it to a service called Raindrop IO. It's a new month. So yes, I have a new read it later service. I've tried so many of these. In fact, I've probably tried just about every one that is on the app store and they all just don't quite get to where I want. But Raindrop Raindrop IO was just recently redesigned with Swift UI, so it has this really great native feel on the iPad and iPhone. Absolutely love it. It's great. You can do these customizable keywords and do put like fun icons in there. Like uh, for video, my video game tab, I have the Pokeball icon. Really cool. I use Raindrop IO for bookmarking uh, not just articles, but stuff I want to cover for the channel, gear I want to get, video game stuff, uh, keyboard stuff, anything that just like, okay, I want to save this for later. I need to come back to this. It's not something I can deal with now. That gets saved into Raindrop IO. Then the other kind of reading I do is social stuff. Uh, you know, I like reading what other writers and YouTubers and stuff are doing out there. It gives me inspiration for either stuff to, you know, build off of what they're working on or, you know, maybe go in a whole different direction or something like that. Lately, I've been doing a lot of stuff on Mastodon. Uh, I really like the app Ivory. It works extremely well on the iPad for reading. Threads has also been interesting. Threads is getting there, but it's, it's not quite there just yet, but it is getting there. Since Threads doesn't have app, what I did is I went through Safari, loaded up the web app, and then saved it as a bookmark to the home screen. This way it runs sort of like a native app, it loses all the Safari UI, and you just get the Threads UI. Now, when it comes to reading, most people think books. I don't read a ton of books. I really wish I did, but I'm an incredibly slow reader. Now, sometimes if I just get a book recommended to me over and over and over again, I will uh, go and buy it through the Books app and read it there. I think the Books app is just one of the best designed first party apps Apple has made. Uh, I really, really like it. I'll also listen to audiobooks as well, which are now in the Books app. Uh, I, I like reading, but again, I'm a slow reader. This video is sponsored by Paperlike and their new cleaning kit. 
One of my favorite products Paperlike has ever made is their cleaning kit solution. By its very nature, the iPad gets dirty. We're touching the screen all day long. We have oil and dirt and grease on our fingers. So the, the iPad gets dirty just naturally. And Paperlike just launched a new version of their cleaning kit. This is all about reusability and convenience. The spray head generates a much smoother and consistent stream than the previous version. After spraying, just wipe the iPad down with the bottle, which is covered in a microfiber pad. Your iPad will look squeaky clean. I bring this accessory with me on all of my trips and space is a premium. The spray bottle fits into the hard shell case both ways, making it easier to get in and out now. And the container can now be refilled. Each purchase of the spray bottle comes with five pellets. When empty, add a pellet, fill it up with tap water, and wait about 10 minutes. I love this device and use it every day to clean up my iPads. And if you're using the paper like screen protector, it'll help them last even longer, staying nice and clean. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to where you can go check out Paperlike's new cleaning kit. My thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Now on the iPad mini, I rarely use multitasking. The iPad mini really benefits just from that one app at a time, you know, classic iPad style. You do have split view if you wanna like, you know, copy stuff over, you compare notes or something like that. That is there. Every once in a while I might use it, but I rarely, rarely use multitasking on the iPad mini. I pretty much just stick to one app at a time and maybe something in slide over. And that's where things differ from the way I use like the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro, uh, now that Stage Manager has really been fixed and is, is, is a lot better than what it was last year, uh, my iPad is always in Stage Manager. I'm maxing out that four window limit constantly. Uh, that is my multitasking device. That is my work device. This is my specialty device. And speaking of specialty stuff, I do a lot of journaling. A few years ago when I had a podcast, it's, it's not active anymore, uh, but me and my co-host, we made a uh, journaling shortcut and a journaling template and stuff like that. I've stopped using the shortcut, but I put the template in good notes. So I've been using this for journaling. Uh, I, I pretty much sit down every morning and write in it, just kind of like get the thoughts that are in my head about the previous day and then what I'm doing today and how I'm going to tackle all the stuff I need to get done today. It's just kind of a nice way to um, get everything aligned and make sure you, ha you have a plan for the day and you're not just going like scattershot to, to figure, you know, get everything done. The other thing I use uh, GoodNotes for is script markup. So whenever I do a video, I write a script. Sometimes it's just an outline. Sometimes like my iPadOS walkthrough, it is a word for word script. But what I like to do is I like to take the uh, script and I export it as a PDF into GoodNotes. And then when in GoodNotes, I sit there and I just mark up the script. I'll read through it, mark it up. You know, if something doesn't flow right, I'll rearrange things. Like I'll draw arrows, rearrange things, and I can go back to the script and, and fix it in the script. The other thing I use those script PDFs for is, is when I have the final version, I'll, I'll re-export it again into GoodNotes. And I use it as a, kind of a shot list for B-roll. Now, I do have all of my standard productivity apps here on the iPad, you know, note taking, task management, calendar, those kinds of things. But they're more for capture. If I have an idea for something, I will capture it in my task manager or my notes app. Uh, if somebody texts me and says, hey, let's go to dinner on Friday, I can add that to my calendar, stuff like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into my whole productivity workflow later in the what's on my iPad uh, Pro video. That is gonna be a whole different thing. I'm still kind of like figuring out a few different apps because I recently had a wrench thrown into the gears that Something you'll notice about both of my iPads is there is a shortcut in the dock, and this is my Action Cut shortcut. I did a whole video about this. Uh, this is the shortcut that is assigned to the Action button, not just on the Apple Watch Ultra, but on my iPhone 15 Pro as well. Uh, well, I use it on both of my iPads as well in the dock. Shortcuts in the dock are probably one of the best ways to run a shortcut on the iPad because you can run them no matter where you are in the OS. So if you're on the home screen or if you have an app open, whatever, you can run them from anywhere. And it doesn't matter if you have a keyboard or trackpad attached or not. Now the quick TLDR for Action Cut, for those that didn't watch that video, is it's a shortcut that adapts to what you are doing. So it looks at your various focus modes or devices. It'll give you a list of shortcuts to run in those different focuses. You can run those and it changes depending on which focus you're in. It's really handy. 
handy. I do also have action cut on the lock screen of my iPad mini, uh, just kind of a nice way I can grab it, tap the action cut shortcut and run it. The other two widgets that I have on the lock screen of my iPad mini are things. This shows me the today view of things and a couple of tasks I need to do. And also carrot weather, which will just show me kind of the weather outside. It's kind of a nice like, oh, hey, it looks like it's gonna be a nice day. Let's open up all the windows in the house kind of thing. Now, unlike my other devices, especially my iPad Pro, uh, I only have one lock screen on the iPad mini. Again, this isn't a work device. So I didn't really feel the need to set up a dozen different lock screens for different focus modes. Now on the home screen, I do have a few different widgets. The first is carrot weather. I just like to see the temperature, you know, can I open up the windows to the house? Would today be a good day to go work outside? Then I have Fantastical. Uh, I have their interactive widget here. I love this widget. So on one half, you have the month and the date view. and the other half, you have all of your events. You can tap on the dates to jump around them. Uh, it has a little heat map to show you how busy you are. Having a calendar widget is essential to me because I will miss calendar appointments. I am the absolute worst at looking at my calendar because I don't typically have a bunch of events every day. It's usually like one or two events a week that I have, but I, if I don't have a widget on my home screen, I will forget about those. Then I have the large things widget so I can see what tasks are due today. Uh, I can have quite a few tasks due in a given day. So it's nice to just be able to lay those out. Then the last widget is Timery's Excel widget. Half of this widget is for starting time tracking. You could just you know pick one right there. Then the other half is reports. I'm not entirely sure how useful this widget is to me because again, I don't use my iPad mini for work. So I don't actually think this is the most useful widget for me. I just put it there. I should probably find like a reading widget or something like that to go there. Now, unlike my iPad Pro, my iPad mini doesn't just have apps in the dock. Again, this goes back to it being a portrait device. If you just fill up the dock on the iPad mini and you're using it in portrait mode, those icons are awfully small. So I put a few on the home screen and a few in the dock. The way I think about it is the ones in the dock are like my capture apps. So again, those are my productivity apps that I just need to jump into quickly add something and then get out. Then the stuff on the home screen is like reading apps and stuff I don't use in multitasking. Now, like everyone, I use my iPad mini uh, to watch videos and it's such a great device for that. Sometimes it can obviously be YouTube. Other times I may put on a Formula One race if I'm like in here editing a video and I'm using my iPad Pro to edit the video, I'll put the Formula One race on my iPad mini and just set it up right next to me. It's kind of a really nice combo for that. And despite it only having two speakers and it's only stereo and landscape mode, it actually still sounds pretty good. And video is the one exception where I do use this iPad in landscape mode. Really the only accessory I use with it uh, other than the Apple Pencil, but is the Smart Folio from Apple. I like it because it's orange. I just got it because I just needed a stand and I wanted a stand that's always with it. So no matter where it's at, I can just set it up. To go back to Raindrop IO, I will save YouTube links in there and I will just pull those up. Typically Raindrop IO is like, if I'm like sitting down to eat lunch and I have my iPad mini, I'm gonna turn on a video. I'll open up Raindrop IO, see if I have anything saved there first before I go into the YouTube app. Now, one of my favorite ways to wind down the day is to actually build shortcuts. I sit down with the iPad mini for this because a lot of my stuff is done on the iPad Pro. I just like to take a break from that device. There's something to be said about like mentally stepping away from like where you're sitting all day and the device that you're using and going and doing something else to kind of kind of relax. And the iPad mini is a great device for building shortcuts. Now, if I'm not building shortcuts, I'll be looking for apps to cover or, or games to cover on the channel. Um, I am gonna try and cover more games on here, especially now that the iPad is getting like true AAA games alongside like console releases. I'm very excited for that. But I treat my iPad mini as a specialty device. This is where I do weird experiments. This is where I try new apps, you know, mess around with things because this iPad Pro is my production device. I can't break this. This is, you know, if this breaks, I'm in a world of hurt. So I do all the weird experiments and stuff on here. And if I have data loss or break something, oh well. 
So if you're looking for a secondary machine, whether it's a device to read from, play some games, watch videos, whatever, the iPad mini is a great device from this. This isn't something I would wanna work from full time, even if I was just like a writer and all I was in text documents because of the screen size. But because of the screen size, it, it makes it a really compelling secondary device. If you have an iPad mini, I wanna hear how you're using it in the comments below, let me know. My thanks to Paperlike and their new cleaning kit for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.